everyone, it's Louise with Louise McCare, and uh, thank you for coming, and hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to be making another tray today, as you can see. This is a smaller of the three that I've got, and uh, and yeah, I've uh, I've been out of the tray making business for almost a month because early December we went back to California to uh, for our daughter's wedding, which went great. We were back there for a week, and I'm only now just getting back into making trays again but I found a great color palette with the coasters that I just made and that's what I'm going to use on this so what I've got here is my DecoArt 24 karat gold extreme sheen my QNAG by Golden Quinacridone Nicolazzo my um, Art Mines this is antique aqua with some oxide white in it from Golden because I wanted to make it less uh, opaque, so it has a little more ability of adopting other colors in it. This is, um, oh, this is my Sky Blue Topaz by DecoArt. And this is Anthra Anthraquidone <laughs> Blue by Golden. I'm gonna use my Australian white Floetrol and my American black Floetrol because I want to get through it. And uh, yeah, let's get going. I've got my Multi-Pro I'll be laying down is my pillow. I'll be stretching out the paint to the corners. I might show you some of it. It's rather tedious and um, I don't want to waste a lot of time doing that. All right, I'll be back in a second. I'm going to record this, but I probably am not going to share all of it with you. Now the key here is to not put too much down, but to put enough down so that you have everything covered. If you put too much down, you're gonna end up having to take the paint away and it's a pain in the butt, believe me. So I'm gonna keep my fingers um, free of anything so I can have clean fingers. And I'm just gonna stretch this out to start with as best as I can. Looks pretty good. Got a couple air bubbles, but I'm not worried about that. So yeah, now I'm going to push the paint to the edges using my spatula. So let's get some more down here. I'd rather start with a little less paint and add than um, have too much and have to take it off. So I'm just gonna carefully get it up to the edges. And in case you're wondering, I don't use a blow dryer to do this because I don't wanna have waves going up against the sides. Ideally, I don't want any of the paint to go over the tape because that's gonna make it more of a mess in removing the tape, trying to keep the paint in place. I might need to add a little more. But like I say, I'd rather have to add some than take it away. Corners is always the challenge. I'll save that. I'm gonna skip ahead here as this is what I'm doing for the next five minutes or so to save you guys some time. Yeah, I've got three trays I have to resin. I haven't been doing any resining because it's just been too darn cold. Okay, I think I'll just add a little bit more just to cover the bases because I think I Stole some over here. Very careful not to drip. Okay, let's take this off for a second. Tilt this around a little bit. I 
probably need a little more over here. I'm very careful I'm not to drip this. on the bare wood because I don't want to have to clean it up. But I will say, if I do drip on it, it's almost better to let it dry and then put some alcohol on a paper towel and just wipe it off. All right, let me get some colors down. I'm just laying this first color down as my road map. Maybe a little less laying down color this time. As I sit here and pour more down. So everyone, I'm gonna double time through this. You can see how I'm laying down the colors and uh, I am laying down a little extra gold because I just wanted to have more gold in this show up. And I will have listed in the details in the description box the sequence. But you can see the sequence I'm doing anyway. Because if you're looking, you'll see. <laughs> All right, so I'll be quiet for now. So right here, I get an errant drip. Now, the easiest way to pick it up is just dab your finger in it and remove it. Now, when I first started, I tried to pick it up with a palette knife and or a popsicle stick, and that just spread it everywhere. So just dabbing it with your finger takes care of it. Now on the Antique Aqua here, I realized it was an opaque paint because in the first coaster set I did, that blue, that aqua blue, was taking over parts of the paintings because none of the other colors were showing up. So that's when I realized I needed to um, make it less opaque more transparent and what I did with that was add some oxide white by Golden to number one thin it down and also add a little more transparency to it so that colors can bleed through. All right I have to go very quickly here. My white sinks fast so I'm going to have my black all ready and then I got to get my hair dryer going. Now my white is sinking because it's very thin and I probably should have just added more titanium white to it to thicken it up and make it the same consistency as the black. But also this shows that your consistencies don't have to be exactly spot on, at least for this, because it did work out in the end. But I had to work very quickly here, get that white down, then the black, and you can see it already disappearing, and then get the hair dryer on it as quickly as possible to blow it out before all the cell activator sinks to the bottom. Here we go. Low, fan, cool. Not high.
So as I'm watching this back, I'm noticing that I'm not setting the hairdryer in the right location or the right angle. I'm too far on top of it instead of behind the line of paint that I need to blow the cell activator over. So just as a word of note there, you want your hairdryer on an angle behind where the cell activator is going to start blowing. I guess that's a place to assess the situation. Let me get this couple goobers out of the paint. And let me blow. So I think I'm going to blow that cell activator out a little bit. So I'm going to pick up the pace here. I have a long video I have to cut down somehow. So yeah, you can see as I was creating this, I realized I didn't have the hairdryer in the right angle or location. So now I'm spreading it out with a straw because I have all this extra cell activator that hasn't been blown. So what I just did here was switch out my straw because the last thing I want is to get spittle on the painting because then I've got to try to dab it out with a, a paper towel. So it's always good to have a few extra straws hanging around. So as you blow, the condensation from your lungs blowing through the straw doesn't drip into the painting. And it also helps if you have even five, six, seven straws extra that you have them clean and ready to go because here I am picking up the straw that I just switched from and... I'm probably going to run into some spittle in it. Wait, aha, I have another straw I can use that hasn't been touched yet. <laughs> it also helps to have different colored straws and then you can keep track of them better. So all I'm doing here with the palette knife is just finding places where there's space and where the bloom blew out and there might be a point. I'm just extending the little bit of paint that's on the point out to make it just a little more flowy. So here I'm just adding a little more pillow paint so I get all the way up into the corners. Yeah, I think we're about done. So sometimes you pop the bubbles, you get color. So I am actually going to give this a quick torch, a very quick torch. So I went to the torch because I didn't want to have to hand pop all the different bubbles that were forming underneath. I wanted to just get them all at once and see whether I was dealing with white spots or color. So 
I got air bubbles I need to get out. Let's try something else. Let's try. Because under most of these air bubbles is color. Like over here, I just got a whole bunch of cells pop up. This is really pretty. I'm sitting here just looking at it. These are really fun, guys. I'm serious. You need to try doing these. These are these are fun. They're fun. I get these off of Amazon. I get three in a pack for like twenty-seven dollars or so, and they're nice. They're solid. They're bamboo. They're not. Uh, they're not. They don't leak. There's the bubble I was trying to get. So here are the wet results. Some really nice stuff in here. When I hit it with the torch, I got all those cells. Another tray for the books. There you go, folks.